Finally, Leave federal government labor agree on 70,000 naira as exactly new minimum wage. After the previous meeting with the president, <laughs> it was the leeway demanded by the labor leaders to consult with their larger organs over an earlier discussion here. Yet, the parties were prepared to put the issues to rest with the talks behind House the House of doors. Representatives Thank members you. to take 50% salary cuts for six months to support the federal government in tackling economic hardship. And JAM clears the way for 2024 university admissions for 16-year-old candidates. Hello, good evening. This is NTA Network News. I am Juma Yusuf. Thank you know, John Adams joins me tonight from Lagos, while Benny Adams will be joining us much later tonight with the latest in the world of business. You can follow this news broadcast live on all our social media platforms displayed on your screen. We begin tonight with a confirmation of the resolution of the protracted disagreement between government and labor over the prospective new minimum wage as the negotiating parties have agreed on a new minimum wage of 70,000 Naira. The parties reached this agreement after a meeting chaired by President Bola Chinibu at the State House. State House correspondent Musba Wahab reports. Leaders of the organized labor unions were back in the State House exactly a week after the previous meeting with the president. It was the leeway demanded by the labor leaders to consult with their larger organs over an earlier discussion here. Yet, the parties were prepared to put the issues to rest with the talks behind closed doors. That sound broke out of the room after over an hour of a meeting. A meeting point has been found. Today is a happy day for Nigeria. We are happy to announce today that both the federal government and the organized labor have agreed on an increase on the 62,000 Naira minimum wage. The new national minimum wage that we expect Mr. President to submit to the National Assembly for legislation is 70,000 Naira. But that is not all. There is also a boost, like Mr. President has assured, in ensuring that massive investment is going to be made in the area of infrastructure. There is also a deepening of the investment of the federal government in renewable energy. More money is going to go into the acquisition of more buses, the CNG buses. And of course, that it has to be reviewed every three, three years, not more than that, of course, so that we're able to evaluate and see whether our economy is picking up or whether uh, something has to be done further, considering the sensitivity of the issue. We are taking this uh, well with mixed feeling because of the situation of the economy. But we have to move ahead, you know, despite uh, the situation. And the negotiation can linger, you know, coming from uh, 62 to 70. Other issues, including that of the parallel labor unions of university workers, were also addressed. We made a case for Sano and Nasu. We made a case for them that the president should, as a father of the nation, should look at it compassionately. So that we will not have a case where universities will be closed again. Thank you. The executive is now expected to transmit these agreed figures in a bill to the National Assembly for proper legislation. Already, the National Legislature is in receipt of an amendment bill to the 2024 budget to accommodate the increments to the federal workers' salaries and wages. From the State House, 
Musbal and Wahab, NC News. Now, for more on the FG Labour Agreement on the new minimum wage, we are being joined by Comrade Tommy Etim Okon. He's the Deputy President, Trade Union Congress of Nigeria. He's also the National President Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria. Also joining us via Zoom is Ira Isa Aremu, Director General, Michael Imoju National Institute for Labor Studies um, in Kwara State. Uh, comrades, you're welcome to NTA Network News. Thanks for joining us. I'll begin with you, Mr. Yeah, yeah, I'll begin with you, Mr. Okon. Earlier on, we watched and listened to the NLC President Joe Ajero and his TUC counterpart Festus Osifo rationalizing Labour's acceptance of 70,000 Naira as the new minimum wage. What is the agreed template? That's my question for implementation of payment for those impacted, especially within the federal and civil service. Thank you very the state much. State civil service, actually. I, I, I think we should not just hurriedly jump to the template because the template definitely will come. But uh, I want to say that uh, we in the organized labor, we fought a good fight. And uh, from uh, 615, you know, we lingered even when the organized private sector and government agreed to 62,000 uh, era minimum, which uh, but we feel that that wasn't enough, and we stood our ground for 250,000. But you see, the wisdom of Mr. President meeting twice with the organized labor, you, you know, shows that uh, uh, we were docked in our fight. Uh, I just feel that Nigerian workers should know that uh, it wasn't an easy fight, uh, taking cognizance of uh, the situation and. Uh, uh, the 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 those uh, indices we put in place to ensure that uh, workers earn a living wage. But having said that, we want to also uh, salute Mr. President for also taking cognizance of the fact that uh, three years uh, uh, frequency of review becomes very important because it was a proposal that uh, we were not looking at, uh, you know. Because even when the 30,000 uh, Naira minimum wage in 2019 was considered, the frequency of five years came into four. But if you look at what 70,000 has come to play now, it therefore means that we have about 134% uh, uh, increase. And yes. with three, you know, year review frequency, I think... Uh, that we for the good Okay, Mr. 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 I need to pause you here, comrade, for, for, for some clarification because Nigerians are actually interested in the template. Would you, are you saying that you reach an agreement without the template? The template will be worked out by National Income Salary and Wages Commission. It is a normal thing that you look at that. And don't also forget that uh, the act will also be sent to National Assembly because it's a constitutional matter. And when that goes, there's going to also be a public hearing where you look at that. These are issues before we talk about the templates. Okay, let me, let me reach uh, Comrade Isa Ramuna to get... Your reaction on the 70,000 Naira agreed by Labour and government, and um, we were talking about the template earlier. You've been part of a struggle like this before, and you, you people have fought for better salaries, better living wage for Nigerians. What is your reaction on this announcement? Well, do you mind? I think uh, good evening to you, to all your viewers. Uh, I think my first reaction is not really different from the uh, that of my comrade, Comrade Okun, uh, the Deputy President of TUC, as well as that of the Honorable Minister. I think it's a landmark ag ag agreement that we have entered into. Uh, this is the sixth national minimum wage. And uh, I can go on memory lane to let you know that uh, this is the most uh, significant because it's about uh, close to uh well over 100 percent 130 or so percentage increase in nominal terms i think i want to salute the organized labor the federal government led by the president as well as the honorable minister of labor and of course employers of uh, labor in the private sector uh for you know moving positions that has made us to now have an agreement and that's and that's the point we've been trying to make 
nobody gets anything through negotiation unless you negotiate you have the spirit of compromise uh, labor came down from 250 federal government also moved you know from 62 to 70. Uh, so in nominal terms is the most far reaching if you get the calculation and i'm also excited that we're breaking the five year cycle uh you know because with the full, full, full you know instability or stable economic atmosphere i think it is completely wrong for us to leave minimum wage in comatose for five years ago in fact if you go on memory lane you discover that not even five years in real time it has been or even to some extent nine years you know seven years so but it's not that it's the agreement that we have reached to now reduce the the, the 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 review to three years so but for the uh, templates i think you kept on asking as you might i'm very sure you're also entitled to your minimum wage i think the national salaries and wages commission we definitely sit back to look at the numbers i mean there will be what they call consequential uh, uh, adjustment you know which we of course we affect all categories of workers depending on what is negotiated again the spirit of collective bargaining will come in there but on the whole i think this celebration of democracy i've told you this is the sixth national minimum wage uh, that we are negotiating now five of them have taken the place in democracy because democracy allows for freedom of association for assembly for compromises and i want to salute mr president for the statemanship you know he, be, he virtually became the chief negotiator in two within a week you know two two times engagement with uh, with organized labor and i think yeah. i'm happy that we have a wise outcome which means labor has a right to engage in policy contestation. It's legitimate, but eventually it will lead to policy uh, agreement, policy compromise, as we have already okay, got uh, into today. Okay, okay yeah. comrade, it's, I need to come back to the studio and ask Mr. Uh, comrade uh, Okon this question. Is labor still tinkering over how to handle states and perhaps the private sector players who fail to comply with payment of the new minimum wage after passage by the National Assembly and, of course, assent by the president? Well, you know, you know, like you said, once the act passed and uh, it was signed by Mr. President, it becomes a law. And I feel that in this dispensation, no governor or even the organized private sector that will be so inhuman not to obey the law in that case. And don't also forget that uh, there are also mechanisms for monitoring which uh, will also include the organized uh, uh, labor in that. And we will be very strict about it, so we will not. If you look at even with what has happened with the passage of uh, uh, local government autonomy by the Supreme Court, that shows you that everybody will be alert and will be very sensitive, you know, especially with any recalcitrant uh, governors. The act will take into consideration the do and don'ts in that regards. Yeah, quite quickly, uh, Comrade Aramu, before we let you go, you know, the pro president promised that now it's that three years, you no, know, three yearly you know, negotiation for, for, for wages for Nigerians. Do you think it's a way forward for the FG union relationship? Oh, I think so. I mean, it's also a far reaching uh, compromise on the part of the government, and I'm very sure on the part of the employers of labor. I think, uh, I mean, even if you take uh, United Kingdom, they virtually review minimum wage every, every year. You know, because everywhere, you know, the numbers are not stable, inflation goes up, you know, currencies are not stable. And I think uh, it's significant that we have moved from five years ago to three years ago. But the one that may be much more interested is the qualitative aspect. Government is also willing to massively invest in, in transportation, you know, other uh, things that will lower you know the the cost of living you know for the working people and i think this is extremely significant that we're having this kind of agreement at this period okay and, comrade um, uh, comrade is that move? thank you so that much we're actually out of time for now yeah. on this segment uh he's the director general michael imodu national institute for labor studies comrade thank you so much for your time we appreciate you. And Comrade Tommy Etim Okon, Deputy President, Trade Union Congress of Nigeria. He's also the National President, Association of Civil, Civil, Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria. He also joined us here in the studio. Thank you so much. And I hope uh, we'll know when the implementation begins. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. We'll take a break. When we return, more on network news will be coming your way. Don't go away. You're welcome back. 
In the meantime, President Bola Tinubu is calling for the enhancement of the economic value of bilateral relations between Nigeria and partner nations. The president made the call when he received letters of credence from the new ambassador of Portugal, Ohe Adeo Martins dos Santos, and that of Vietnam, Biu Quang Hung, and Kuwait, Salim Khalifa Mohammed Amuzain, at the presidential villa. The president expressed his appreciation for Nigeria's long-standing relations with Portugal and the shared interests in the areas of trade and culture, as well as partnership in oil and gas, which he says has translated into gains for both countries. In his response, the ambassador of Portugal said investors from his country have a keen interest in Nigeria and trade with Nigeria on gas, which predates the war between Russia and Ukraine, will be sustained. In his meeting with the ambassador of Vietnam, President Tinibu said the manufacturing sector in Nigeria is ready to benefit from the automating skills and technology of the Asian country. President Tinubu had also, in another meeting, thanked the ambassador of Kuwait for his country's long-standing relations with Nigeria and extended his appreciation to the Emir and the Crown Prince of Kuwait. The new envoys were received with a guard of honor mounted by the Presidential Guards Brigade. Now to legislative matters. The Senate has passed for second reading the bill that seeks to provide a comprehensive legal framework for insurance business in Nigeria. The bill, bill sponsored by Senator Abiru Mukail Adeto Kumbo would make more effective the marine and motor vehicle insurance as well as the National Insurance Corporation of Nigeria. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports. Of insurance in Nigeria lacks the desired clarity, especially in terms of access and contributions when such need arises. This, among other reasons, is why the Senate is embarking on the review of existing legislations. The contribution of the insurance sector to the gross domestic product has remained low, mainly due to poor legal framework and operational challenges, including the integrity of some insurance companies. We are all victims of the nonchalant performance of the insurance industry. The burden of our insurance industry in Nigeria is the, in their inability to settle claims. It's not only going to rekindle the hope of our people, it's also going to assist them uh, as much as possible to, to trust the insurance industry as well. The insurance industry uh, is one of uh, the pillars of uh, every economy. The bill has been referred to the Committee on Banking and Insurance for further legislative action. Bill seeking the establishment of National Road Transport Council was rejected by lawmakers, while the bill to establish South-South Development Commission built for second reading was stepped down in the course of debate to allow for further consultations. Senate has urged authorities to assist victims of windstorm in Jigawa following a motion from Senator Mustafa Habib. The windstorm accompanied by heavy rainfall caused widespread destruction of lives, injuries, houses, farmlands and schools in the community. So we sympathize with them, our hearts are with them, particularly those who probably lost their loved ones and love their habitats, lost their farmlands and all that. Uh, the Senate must protect the people of Laya Town and all Nigerians. That's what we are here for. In another development, Senate Committee on Tertiary Education at a public hearing has assured Nigerians of government's determination to meet education needs of citizens as it engages stakeholders for inputs on bill to establish University of Applied Sciences Manchok in Kaduna State. The establishment of this federal university will be the first federal presence in my senatorial district. This will not only enhance our national development, but also stimulate the local economy, creating job opportunities and fostering growth. This is in line with the Renew Hope agenda to deepen the educational system of this country. Other bills on which inputs were received at the public hearing include bills seeking the upgrade the of the Nigerian Institute of Mining and mining, Geosciences, Plato State, to a university from the National Assembly.
Lami Ali, NCA News. At the House of Representatives, the lawmakers passed a resolution to slash their salaries by 50% for six months to provide succor for Nigerians and avert a planned nationwide protest over economic hardship. Deputy Speaker Benjamin Kalu moved the motion at plenary, appealing to proponents of the protest to be patient with the Tinubu administration. National Assembly correspondent Mitere Ikpen tells us more. Please, can you rise and move your motion? Representative Ayokunle Isiaka in his motion prayed the general public to embrace peaceful dialogue rather than embark on a protest over economic situation. Let us reason together. Let us listen to our one another and let us walk hand in hand towards a brighter tomorrow. The House was unanimous that any protest in the country at this time could be hijacked by hoodlums. You can call for protest, but there is always no state actors at the back door that are waiting to hijack what you think you organize under peaceful manner. And there is a need to find out the instigators and see, make them see reasons. We have a government that listens, that is committed to delivering on its promises. I'm moving that we amend that prayer to include that members sacrifice uh, maybe 50% of our salary for a period of six months. Let's all of us cut our salaries, put the money in government copper, provide short-term solutions to this problem, Mr. Speaker. One thing I can take and uh, tell the world concerning this motion is our collective resolution to sacrifice 50% of our salaries for, the, for a period of six months to support the government and the people of Nigeria on the issue of this uh, food security, food shortages, and so on and so forth. Lawmakers called for investigation of an alleged conspiracy by international oil companies to frustrate smooth operation of the Dangote refinery. Urge the Minister of Petroleum Resources and all relevant NDAs to immediately take urgent steps and intervene in the matter of crude oil supply to Dangote refinery. The House also passed a resolution to curb incessant banditry, killings and kidnapping in Sokoto State and environs. I'm trying to raise this issue with heavy hearts. Urge the chief of army staff and the inspector general of police to mobilize security personnel enough to the affected areas. Meanwhile, the House Committee on Defense was asked to initiate steps towards establishing and activating the Armed Forces Reserve to boost national security as provided in the Armed Forces Act. From the National Assembly, Mitaire Ikben, NTA News. Meanwhile, stakeholders on the platform of the Governing All Progressives Congress, APC, have described the planned nationwide protest by some faceless Nigerians as an attempt to undermine the nation's sovereignty and plunge the, country, the economy into disarray. Political correspondent Abubakar Akwanga reports that Director General of the Confederation of APC Support Groups made the position of other support groups known during a media briefing. Stakeholders on the platform of the Governing All Progressives Congress say governance is a process and the proposed nationwide protest does not have solutions to the current economic challenges faced. Hence, the need to suspend any move that would further undermine the progress and stability of the country. We have not forgotten the answer's painful memory. Therefore, we should not indulge ourselves in an untimely protest that has the potential and, and attraction of being hijacked by hoodlums, political jobbers, and losers. Professor Keilani Mohammed appreciates Tinubu's presidency in reshaping the nation's destiny and putting critical sectors on the move for national development, social harmony, and political stability. President Tinubu has a listening ear in the wake of this he has dispatched 22 trucks to each state of the Federation of Rice. We are appealing to the state governors to ensure that the community is not diverted to political cronies and relatives. He commended President Tinubu on approval of an implementable national minimum wage. In Abuja, Abubakar Akwanga, NT News. 
Now let's bring you up to speed with other news as the private sector must sustain its collaboration with government in the provision of critical health infrastructure in order to fast track the realization of the universal health coverage in the country. Nigeria's First Lady Oluremi Tinibu set up this while inaugurating a medical diagnostic center in Lagos. State House correspondent Adeni Taiwo reports. Good ecosystem. The ability and facility to detect diseases and other conditions through proper diagnosis are crucial towards the prevention and management of health issues. The establishment of one of such facilities, boasting cutting-edge technology and skilled professionals in Lagos, one of Nigeria's most densely populated states, is here for a cause to cheer. Our neighbors, Africa and the world. Inaugurating the facility, Nigeria's first lady, Olure Mitinobo, says the establishment of the multi-specialist center coming at a time when the federal government is committing huge resources into the health sector is a proof of what can be achieved where there is proper collaboration between the government and the private sector. This center occupies a strategic position in the four-point agenda of the Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare, which are, one, improving governance and leadership, Two, improving population health outcomes. Three, medical industrialization unlocking value chains. And four, health security enhancing emergency preparedness. Minister of State for Health, Tunji Alausa, who was represented at the ceremony, is happy about the potential impact of the facility and others like it on the challenges of brain drain in Nigeria's health sector. We can compensate for the brain drain phenomenon that is happening in Nigeria. And so we plan to produce thousands of medical professionals. And a facility like this, I am sure, will qualify for a place where our training doctors and our training nurses can come and learn. The first lady was joined at the ceremony by former president Olusha Gombasujo and other dignitaries. In Lagos, Adeni Itaiwo, NTN News. Still in Lagos, Hingino John Adams will be giving us the next set of report. Hello, Hingino. Hello, Hello Jim Mai. The Federal Road Safety Corps, FRSC, is deploying innovative strategies to road traffic management in achieving its mandate of minimizing road traffic crashes across the country by creating a safer and more secured motoring environment for Nigerians. Corps Marshal Sheikh Usman Mohammed, who is on his first working visit to Lagos, disclosed that latest technologies for its operations will soon be unveiled. Adeola Komiakere reports. Road accidents have been identified as the eighth leading cause of death by the Global Status Report ranking, putting Africa on 19.5% while Nigeria stands at 41.69% per 1,000 people. Targets have been set for nations to take action by halving road traffic deaths and injuries by 2030. Owing to its renewed vigor and rejigged operational strategies for zero fatality and zero deaths, the Federal Road Safety Corps has continued to adopt tactical approaches in aligning with the global mandate of eradicating road traffic crashes in the country. But we get everyone involved. Core Marshal Shehu Muhammad says building a synergy between relevant stakeholders and training of personnel remains top priority to achieving its mandate. The Core Marshal hinted that a mobile application that will increase efficiency of its operations will soon be introduced. You can do all the things you can at the comfort of your zone. Applying for driver's license checking your vehicle blood number, getting alert, even staging what you want your vehicle to, the time you want you to, you want to service your vehicle, the time you bought, the expiry time, you can all do it with that app. While fielding answers to questions, the course commitment to ensuring road safety was reiterated with a promise that aggressive public education on change of attitude, especially at motor parks, to curb the abuse of alcohol and drug behind the wheels will soon be embarked upon. In Lagos, 
Adeola Komiakere, NTA News. As a way of sanitizing business transactions while facilitating trade, importers or their representatives must apply directly through the Nigeria Customs Service with information regarding classification, evaluation, as well as origin or status of their goods. The Controller General of Customs at Dewale Adeni, in his message to a sensitization workshop in Lagos, disclosed this. Diana Ajali reports that in readiness for the implementation of advanced ruling system, officers were trained on the process. With the different twists to the smuggling of various items into the country, the Nigeria Customs Service is redoubling efforts towards tackling the ugly trend. Part of the agency's ongoing strategies is the adoption of an advanced ruling system which is anchored around having first-hand information on consignment. Very key tool this is the Controller General of Customs, and, who was represented, uh, said, is in consonant with the conversion of the World Customs Organization, WCO, and the World Trade Organization, WTO. When you talk about trade facilitation, you talk about simplification, you talk about standardization, you talk about transparency. All these are procedures introduced to ensure that customs operations are up to date and up to standard internationally. Why this sensitization workshop is to share ideas on the best approach to implementing this initiative. It was jointly agreed that this approach will facilitate trade and change the spectrum of doing business. This is for the good of our country and I'm sure at the end of the day we will have an opportunity to improve on our processes, especially in terms of importation, bringing clarity. It's to initiate the procedures for advanced rulings officially and to raise awareness among the officers of the Nigeria Customs Service of the application procedures, documentary requirements and risk management controls. Issues addressed at the workshop include the customs law binding both the applicant or the declarant and the Nigeria customs, conducive business environment, promotion of economic development and the time release study, TRS. In Lagos, Diana Ajale, NTA News. That's it from here. Network News will be back after this break. You're watching NTA Network News. From 2025, any candidate below the age of 18 will not be admitted into any tertiary institution in Nigeria. Minister of Education Professor Tahir Maman stated these at the 2024 policy meeting organized by the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, in Abuja. Olayin Kaojo reports. That's that for the 2024 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination will know if your score is enough to secure them admission into tertiary institutions in Nigeria. And this policy meeting is the determining factor. The meeting agreed that the minimum admissible score for admission into universities is 140. For polytechnics and colleges of education, it is 100. Whatever you formulate must not disagree with national policy. Speaking on the approved age for admission of candidates, the meeting agreed that for the 2024 admission of candidates who are 16 and above, they can be admitted. But the Minister of Education also urged the stakeholders to adhere strictly to the central admission processing system and not under the carpet admission. Any vice chancellor, provost, or rector discovered how affected the admission outside the caps would be sanctioned. We have to be firm to say that we can stand by what our certificate that we have awarded. Then came the time to honor institutions that adhere to lay down admission guidelines. This dedication has not only enhanced the principle of credibility of entry into our tertiary educational system, but has also opened doors of opportunity for countless students across the nation. At the end of the event, University of Illinois clinched the overall prize expected to be used for the improvement of the institution's service delivery in the areas of teaching, research, learning, and infrastructural development. Online Kaujo, NTA News. 
Meanwhile, the Senate and House of Representatives Committees on Tertiary and Basic Education have expressed commitment towards the improvement of the quality of education at the tertiary level and make it globally competitive. They made this known in London while supervising the conduct of the JAM examination for students in the diaspora. Correspondent Oluwale, Olawale Hamzat reports. We are here today to witness the examination written by JAM for Nigerian students that are living in UK. A visit to London by the Senate and House of Representatives Committees on Tertiary Education is to supervise the conduct of the Joint Admissions and Matriculations Board JAM examination at the Nigeria House in London. Nigeria is making effort instead of wasting resources to send people to other countries of the world because we have many Nigerians in UK that are determined to go to Nigeria and school in the Nigerian institutions. So that is why the, this exam is being hosted in about nine countries in the world. And we encourage others. We are not looking at only Nigeria. We are also expecting the UK citizen to also pass the pit in this exam. The representative of JAM at the London Centre underscores the commitment of the organization to improve standards and attract students from all over the world to Nigeria. So we have always conducted exams in the United Kingdom. United Kingdom oversees the whole of Europe, giving Nigerians opportunity who reside here and Europe the opportunity to come back and do their university education in Nigeria. We also conduct the same exam in other countries of the world. We conduct in Saudi Arabia, we conduct in South Africa, we conduct in Accra, we conduct in over the Cameroon, Benin Republic, and we are still expanding. This country, I am actually as an international student, so I just thought that it's better to go to Nigeria since I have faith-based university there. I heard that there's an upgrade in the institutions of Nigeria, so I am... So maybe I want to experience this and see. From London, Olawa Lehamzat, NTA News. Time now to bring in Benny Adams for trending news in the world of business. Hello, Benny. Thank you, Jimmy. I'm talking business. Uh, President Bola Metinibu at the opening of ongoing session of African Natural Resources and Energy Investment Summit 2024 noted that his administration's target in solid mineral sector is to make Nigeria a leader in critical metals with the aim to set new standards in the mining industry and ensure that Africa gets an equitable slice of supplying the world with critical metals. Renewable energy, particularly solar energy, remains the most cost-effective solution for connecting our rural communities to electricity. Over the past decade, Nigeria has attracted over two billion U.S. dollars in, in investment in the renewable energy sector, making it a fast-growing sector in the economy. Our commitment is to ensure this trajectory and attract more private sector involvement in the renewable energy space, including manufacturing locally produced solar panels and batteries. By encouraging local equipment production, we can reduce the cost of implementation, thereby lowering the threshold of electrification. I still talking energy oil prices ticked higher on Thursday, buoyed by a bigger than expected weekly decline in U.S. crude stockpiles. Brent features rose 13 cents to $85.21 a barrel, while the U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude rose 31 cents to $83.16. Brent climbed 1.6% on Wednesday and WTI rose at 2.6%. And on the markets, investors gained 262.82 billion naira as the old share index advanced by 0.47% to close at 1,503.21 basis points. 
a total of 392.7 shares in 9,013 deals, corresponding to a market value of 8.333 billion naira, were traded. Today's data shows a 64% decline in volume, 17% decline in turnover, but 3% improvement in deals. The current market capitalization is 56.9 trillion naira. On the aggregate, 119 listed equities participated in trading, ending with 24 gainers and 29 losers. Guaranteed Trust Holding recorded the highest volume of 39.7 million traded shares, followed by Veritas Capital Assurance with 36.1 million and FCMB Group 31.6 million. That is Business News. Network News continues, but after this break, do stay with us. A National Advisory Council and National Project Coordination Committees to align processes towards the attainment of sustainable development goals have been inaugurated. Elizabeth Omori reports that key speakers at the inauguration which held at the instance of the Civil Society Organization, Community Advancement and Humanitarian Empowerment Initiative highlighted the role of the CSOs and the media in attaining the SDGs by 2030. The Security Agenda for Sustainable Development Goals, adopted by all United Nations members in 2015, birthed 17 SDGs to end poverty and protect the planet. To achieve these goals before 2030, civil society organizations in Nigeria, under the auspices of the Civil Society Organizations on Community Advancement and Humanitarian Empowerment Initiative, are strategizing to ensure that Nigeria meets the targets through grassroots support. We work closely with the 36 states and the FCT to mainstream their SDGs into the medium and long-term development policies and plans of the states. And we do this in a scientific way. All our institutional members are ready to support governments in achieving the SDG Agenda 2020-2030. COP 2028 climate change recommendation, Green Grey World Strategic Policy, and National Development Plan Policy Company. Implementing the SDGs, Executive Director News of the, the NCA, Ayo Adewi, insists requires mutual understanding between the media and CSOs, given the strategic role of the media in agenda setting. By working together, the media and the CSOs can create a more informed engaged and active citizenry, paving the way for a brighter future. So by the time we are coming back to do a kind of evaluation, they can appraise ourselves, you know, where we are. Are we at 30%, are we at 50%, are we at, you know, 80%. Stakeholders recommend effective synergy between MDAs and development agencies to achieve their goals. Elizabeth Omori, NCA News. The Ojime family of Idenwele Eo Esan in Edo State have announced the passing of the patriarch of the family, Paikedi Ojime, who died June 18, 2024, at the age of 74. He was a retired accountant who served meritoriously before joining the Nigerian Legion. Funeral ceremony for the deceased will commence and last between July 9, 29 to August 2, 2024. A service of songs will hold July 31st at the Deep, Deeper Life Bible Church in Ikosi, K2, Lagos, while a funeral service will be held subsequently on August 2nd at the Deeper Life Bible Church in Edo State. Uh, Ejime is survived by several children. Among them is Dr. Tope Ojime, former managing, manager programs, Radio Nigeria Network Service. The death has also been announced of an educationist and community leader, Baba Kaku Mata Mushelia, at the age of 95. He died in Shafa town of Hawu local government area after a protracted illness. He was one time deputy provost and registrar College of Education, Wakabu, board member Umar Ibn Ibrahim College of Education, Science and Technology, Bama. Kaku Bata Mushelia was one of the pre-independent indigenous teachers who took over from the missionaries and served Kano state government from 1969 to 1991 in several capacities before leaving as chief inspector of primary education. He survived by a wife, eight children, 31 grandchildren and one great-grandchild. Among his children is assistant director news NT headquarters at Liwu Mishelia. He'll be buried in his hometown Shafa on Saturday 
20 July 2024. We'll close shop tonight by bringing up an exciting video of some of the nation's youngest minds. Pupils of Blossom Lotus Academy Kubwa Abuja caught up in the rather patriotic euphoria of Nigeria's national anthem. Enjoy it. Good night from me.